So we were just talking, and, and is it possible that this could be, he could be one of, uh, you know, have more victims than any other sex offender in the Midwest for in terms of clergy? Raymond Rose is one of the most dangerous men to have ever passed through the Twin Cities. Um, Raymond Rose, uh, we know, has sexually abused, um, at least into the teens that we know of, um, and I anticipate we'll probably hear from many more as time goes on. What's really scary about Brother Rose was that he, he operated so quickly. Um, in, in the world of, of sex offenders, some sex offenders take long periods to groom their victims and then ultimately to convince them to be able to have sexual contact. Uh, others who are more prolific, like Brother Rose, um, don't go through any grooming process. They use usually alcohol or drugs to try to uh, get their, their victims into the position where he can then sexually assault them. Uh, Brother Rose would, would sexually assault boys that he'd never met before. I mean, it, he, would, he would come into a room, there would be a room full of boys, he always brought beer with him, have, let them all have a couple beers, and then he attacked one or more of the boys. Um, that is the hallmark of a, of a serial predator and a very dangerous serial predator. And we're talking about sexual assaults. I mean, is it safe to say he raped these boys? He, he did. He had sexual contact with them. Um, it, it was rough. It was forced. Um, uh, he, you know, I mean, he sexually assaulted them, absolutely. What's probably most disturbing, and we've heard about it in other clergy abuse cases, but I, I still think people hate to hear it, and it's the truth. In this case, you believe, you know, that other people in authority knew about this. That's correct. In 1966, a, a young man, a boy, that was attending De La Salle High School in Minneapolis um, had been sexually assaulted by Brother Rose. And this boy went to authority figures there, some of the brothers and some of the teachers, at De La Salle and told them that he'd been sexually assaulted by Brother Rose. Um, Brother Rose shortly thereafter disappeared from De La Salle. And now we know, and this lawsuit is, is related to that, now we know Brother Rose moved over to Creighton High School, where he then unfortunately had an entirely new group of boys that he could go after, and he did. And some people may not understand it, but even though he went to a different high school, they would know this because it was the same Christian brothers that he was part of. That's correct. The, the religious order, it's the brothers of the Christian schools, um, religious order commonly referred to as the Christian brothers, um, had a presence at both De La Salle and Creighton as well as the Dunrovin Retreat Center over on the St. Croix River. You started giving some numbers, but so far, so this is the fifth <coughs> lawsuit that has been filed in Minnesota, correct? This is, I think, the fourth Sorry, one in fourth. Minnesota. This is the fourth lawsuit that's filed in Minnesota, and then also in... And you're expecting another one in, on Thursday? There, yes, there are, there's another case in the process of being filed. You've been getting calls from other people as well. I've, I've been getting calls from people from all over the country. Every place Brother Rose worked, he sexually assaulted children. And that includes Minnesota, Wisconsin, North Dakota, and California. I only hope and pray that there aren't any kids right now in danger down in Chicago where he lives unrestricted. I have some concerns about his living arrangements. Many people take solace in the safety of having sex offender registries and the ability to know where sex offenders are. But in the case, this case, the Christian brothers protected Brother Rose from criminal prosecution for decades. And any time things got too hot and he got himself in trouble, the Christian brothers would move him to another location where he would abuse again. But what that had the effect of doing was preventing criminal investigation and criminal prosecution. So Brother Rose, despite the fact he has uh, sexually assaulted many, many children, is not a convicted sex offender. He's not on any sex offender registries. So he can live where he does right now, in a residential neighborhood right near a, a, a De La Salle Institute down in Chicago. One thing we know, sex offenders don't stop sex offending. They don't. They keep offending no matter how old they are. And they, children are still in danger. Do we know, has he ever been convicted of any crime? I don't believe he's ever been convicted of any crime. He was investigated out in California. 
um, and but there was no prosecution or, conv or conviction on that. And are we hopeful though that at some point he's going to be convicted of one of these? Well, that's the way our systems will work. Our systems will work if he's convicted. Then he's a registered sex offender, and he'll be limited on where he can live. He'll be limited on whether he can live close to a school or, or be around children. So absolutely, he has committed many crimes, and he absolutely needs to be held accountable for those crimes. Why, why had, I know you said it's because he's been moved, but even recently, within the last 10 years or so, why hasn't he been convicted yet? Well, I, uh, I believe that the nature of, of being a, a victim of, sex, of a sexual offender um, brings a lot of shame and people are scared to come forward. If someone comes forward and talks about what happened to them involving Brother Rose, they will then put into, into question and, and, and they will be subjected to criticism from their church, from their school. Their parents may not be able to understand this because they're good Catholic families and they've dedicated their entire life. To, to God and, and the Catholic religion. Uh, so it's very difficult for people to come out and, and, and take that on. And I think that's why, is, is that the uh, Christian brothers and, you know, have been around a long time and operate a lot of schools. Do you know, uh, so boys and then age range of when they were victims? Uh, Brother Rose tended to, to go after, because he was assigned to high schools, that was what the age ranges that was available. So he tended to go after kind of the young freshman, sophomore age kids in high school. So it was anywhere from 14 to 16. Sometimes they would get up to junior and senior level, but they were always members of the high school that wherever he uh, was assigned. In, the, in this situation, um, this, young, this young man, the, the plaintiff in this case, um, was it, attended Creighton High School. Uh, Brother Rose was his religion teacher. And Brother Rose was involved with orchestrating a trip down to Chicago uh, where they did a number of things, but one of the things they did is they went down and saw some plays. I think they saw the musical Hair. Um, and my client re remembers exactly what theater and the whole, the whole thing. They stayed in a hotel at the Holiday Inn on Lakeshore um, where uh, my client was required to, I mean, was basically assigned to sleep in the same room as Brother Rose. And of course, Brother Rose got alcohol and um, gave my kid alcohol, he was 15 years old at the time, and um, then sexually assaulted him. What's kind of unique in, in Brother Rose's case is, is his, um, the speed with which he operated. I mean, he, he, he didn't even work to groom a kid two days. He, he came in that night and wanted to have that sex, and that, that's the hallmark of a very dangerous predator. This is not someone who, who is trying to, to work and, and groom and, and get access to children in that way. This is a guy that is a predator that is just going after whatever is there. And it's a very dangerous um, characteristic. It appears as though he really truly was what we view as a predator. He was a guy that spotted a mark and, and went after it. And sometimes he, we've had a number of reports. In fact, I've talked to a number of people of kids who he'd given the alcohol and but they were they were able to fight him off but then he immediately literally that same night went after another kid and and it's just it's a horrible story that those boys tell because they feel horrible they feel absolutely horrible that well they were glad they fought him off but then they were really felt bad that one of their friends ended up getting getting hurt so brother rose cut a very wide swath <coughs> through our community he obviously realized that he was protected Oh, there's no question about that. Yeah, yeah. 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 he absolutely, yeah. Hit absolutely. One and then hit he knew. On the same night. He, right. He wasn't afraid. Of it. There, was a, there was a time with this young man in 1966 who told the De La Salle, some of the brothers over at De La Salle, that Brother Rose had hurt him, injured him, and this guy, that the kid who had told people, Brother Rose wasn't immediately removed, and they ended up going on a trip also down to Chicago where Brother Rose was, and Brother Rose. Um, went at this kid again in front of another one of the um, chaperones that was there. And the chaperone didn't do a single thing, and um, the kid was able to fight him off that time. But there were other, I've talked to other boys that were there and saw that happen. And that's how just out in the open Brother Rose was, he did this in front of other Christian brothers and they didn't, they didn't do anything about it.